This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRH Secrets, I'm going to be discussing my long night, how you can tell the difference between large bowel and small bowel diarrhea in your dogs, and then how best to treat it. Welcome to today's video. This is a little bit of a recreation. So last night, and there's a couple things going on. To begin with, I've decided to go on the seven days without coffee, which I'm currently experiencing as we speak. Hence, uh, maybe I'm a little bit cranky than normal. It's been a long time. I drink far too much coffee. That's going to be a, that's that's an aside. That's going to be for another video. So what happened last night? So I'm sound asleep. It's in the middle of the night. This happened three times. And then I hear this clicking noise. That's my dog next door, that's Lewis. He's moving around, which means, uh-oh. And usually if he wakes up, he's a great sleeper. It means he's probably gotten into something. He's gonna have some diarrhea. So as you can imagine, I'm here resting peacefully. I hear this click clacking. I'm already edgy because I haven't had any coffee the previous day. I'm like, oh, fine. So up I get, as you can see, Look a bit disheveled. So then I walk into my daughter's room to go find my dog, Lewis. Lewis is looking a bit anxious. He was pacing around. So we walk out the door and then down the stairs to go outside. Let's go, Lewis. Come on. Down the stairs. Lewis has that anxious look, meaning he's gonna have some type of diarrhea. So out the door, and just imagine, you guys, just go ahead and imagine this is like the middle of the night. So out the door he goes. And it's cold out. It's actually now minus seven right now. It was even colder last night. We're in amongst a cold snap. So I, Patiently wait, hanging out, okay, it's sometime. I don't even look at the clock. I just know it's super early. Wait, wait, wait. And eventually he's not coming in because he's taking his time because he's got to find the right spot to go to the bathroom. I know he's, I know he's having some form of diarrhea. Lewis, Lewis, come on, come on, get in. Okay, eventually. Then eventually he comes back in, as do I. But then we go back up the stairs because I feel sorry for Lewis and I know he wants to go back to his normal, his normal routine, his normal bed. So back up the stairs, back up to my daughter's bedroom to put him back to bed. Let's go, oh boy. So then I just put Lewis back to bed thinking the first time this is it. Yeah, maybe he ate a little bit of something last night was a bit too rich. Thinking that was it. So I tuck Lewis in, hey, good boy. Give me a little pat on the head, pat on the head. Got myself back into bed. Ah, got all cozy. Shut off my light, I can not fit. Uh, Lewis has done his thing. I can go back to sleep. And then again, and again. Happened three more times. What I first did this morning is then, you know, go outside. I went and had a look to see exactly what type of diarrhea did Lewis have? Because based on that type of diarrhea, um, that, uh, that me has a couple of meanings. One, it gives you a clue as to the diagnosis of what is ultimately causing that diarrhea. Two, it's gonna also affect um, what types of treatments are then chosen. So generally, when we're classifying diarrhea in dogs, we're looking at small bowel diarrhea, so that's diarrhea originating from the small intestinal tract. So 
duodenum, duodenum ileum, like the, the three main parts of the small intestine. Or then there's diarrhea, origin, we call it large bowel, that's originating from the colon. That's a large part of the intestine that, just, that is more responsible for the fermentation. I mean, that's got some of the bacteria in there that are breaking up some of the things, you know, such as fiber, etc., and helping you know, that last end part of digestion with your dog. So in terms of then you know, determining that, the first big thing is just, first of all, the history of clinical signs. Um, one, dogs that have small bowel diarrhea, generally they have large volumes, less frequent, there's often not a lot of straining, and um, if, you go out, if you're going to go out and have a look at it, you're going to see a large amount of diarrhea. It can be fairly watery and substantial. In general, the dogs that have small bowel diarrhea usually can be a more serious thing. It, can, it could be a virus such as parvovirus. It, it could be a, a bacteria such as Salmonella, Clostridia. Um, it could be a parasite such as Giardia. Um, it could be inflammatory bowel disease, although, although IBD can affect large and small intestine. But in general, it's a more serious type condition. Um, potentially, then you're going to want to be seeing your veterinarian. You're looking at some of the underlying causes. Um, Whereas in large bowel diarrhea, typically the different, different clinical signs is there's going to be much more frequent trips to be going outside, such as Lewis had. They're going to be actively straining. Um, often there's a little bit of mucus because they're straining and straining. They're feeling like there's something still there, so they're straining to get it out because that end part of their intestine, the colon, is inflamed. And sometimes there can be a little bit of blood. Um, now, if you look up there in the corner, I've got a picture of something similar to what I saw with Lewis. Um, is this a mucousy small amount of stool with a little bit of blood and, and that's what he had so he actually had large bowel diarrhea um, there's a couple things I, I first did first I grabbed there's a homeopathic called arsenicum album it's arsenicum 30c maybe you guys can see it there I don't know it, it's one of the homeopathics I've personally used the most often and I've had many clients report to be the most effective for them. And, and in particular, I find it works really well for garbage gut. So in terms of giving it, all you need to do is just open your dog's lips, just put it under his, you know, under his lips. You don't even need to fully open his mouth. You just want, want him to slowly absorb that. The second thing I gave Lewis was a conventional medication, loperamide or Imodium. I'll show you it here. Here it is here, antidiarrheal, um, upside down. There it is there. Um, the, the actual drug is called loperamide, as I said earlier. The dog dose is two milligram, is a milligram per 20 pounds, two milligrams per 40 pounds. I gave Lewis, so they come in two milligram tablets. I gave Lewis two of these tablets. Um, the big thing with loperamide is you have to be especially cautious around any of the herding dogs. So if your dog is a collie, a collie cross, you know, border collie, for instance, or any of the herding dogs, um, you want to avoid using this. Another big principle, anytime your dog has any type of diarrhea, um, in particular, is you gotta rest the intestinal tract. And so what that means is that's what he gets for today, Lewis. Um, he's gonna get a small amount of something tonight. But at least you wanna go a good 12 to 16 hours, in some cases 24 hours, if you just fully rest that intestinal tract. So Lewis would like to eat something now, but that's all he's getting, nothing. Full access to water, I want to make sure he's drinking. And you know, the other thing, which I didn't mention earlier, is you want to make sure your dog clinically seems okay. I mean, Lewis is still walking around, wagging his tail. He's wanting me to feed him. I mean, he's not clinically dehydrated. And you get a sense of you know, how your dog is or your cat is, and you just want to make sure that they're not ill. And if that's the case, get them into your veterinarian as soon as possible. But if they're essentially alert, they're still drinking, then by all means, go ahead and use some of these specific remedies. And you know, that one big principle, anytime they have diarrhea, we would say NPO, often we say nothing orally, but in particular, no food for a minimum of 12 hours, so nothing here. And when I do feed him tonight, he's gonna get a little bit of bland cooked rice, about a cup of cooked rice, and I'm just gonna flavor that with just a little bit of, of chicken broth, and that's it. I want something really bland, easy to digest, and he won't be getting back onto his normal food until at least tomorrow morning. And even then, I'm going to feed him less of it. I'm going to feed him, you know, about the, the cup of rice, a little bit of chicken broth mixed in with just about a half a cup of his regular food because I slowly want to wean uh, his intestinal tract back into his regular food so it doesn't flare up again. 
and he doesn't have continued diarrhea. Two other things I want you guys to consider specifically for large bowel diarrhea. Um, and this one are probiotics. I mean, this is a specific probiotic called Ultimate Flora. It's got about 10 different um, probiotic strains in it. And it's got up to 50 billion CFU. So it's just a really, really concentrated probiotic strains. Um, in general, there's a couple of probiotics that seem to be effective. Um, one is lactobacillus, another one is bifidobacterium. Those are probably the two more important probiotics for our dogs. And, and then when you're looking at doses, we're looking at 100 million CFUs for 10 pounds of body weight daily. So the last remedy I wanted to discuss is one I haven't discussed in the past, uh, in particular for diarrhea. Uh, it's, it's using this product here, it's called Diotomaceous Earth. Um, so it actually looks pretty much like a powder. I'll show you here. It's almost, you see there, it's this fine powdery stuff. So it is an earth product. Dug out of the earth. Um, it's, it consists of years ago when we had big parts of the earth covered with salt water. We had little microscopic organisms swimming around in them. Well, it's their skeletons. They've since died and this is kind of the powder that's left over. So these little microscopic algae, their skeletons, now they're crushed up into this fine powder, this diatomaceous earth. Um, what it works really well for is killing some of these differing parasites. So for instance, I actually use it, I just go outside and I'll sprinkle it out on my lettuce. Works great as far as it really uh, keeps the slugs away. They consume some of it and they actually die. So it's also a great, another great product for um, flea control, for instance, where you can you know, sprinkle it in the cracks and crevices. You can even actually use it on your pets. The big thing, it has to be this specific type of diatomaceous earth, which is food grade. So say for people and pets to consume. Um, um, there's you know less expensive purified stuff, which you would never want to consume, never give to your dogs or cats. Um, this is stuff I actually went to a natural health store, picked it up. I was actually, because I was using it on my lettuce, I wanted to make sure. I also wanted to try some of it on my pets for flea control. So if you're gonna use it for our dogs with diarrhea, there's a couple of thoughts. One, some of the basic thought is just the powder itself. It's just gonna act like something that's gonna solidify the fluid in the intestines, and decrease that transit time, and symptomatically give you some relief from the diarrhea. And secondly, too, if it, the possibility that there's a parasite, say something such as Giardia, or some of these roundworms, for instance, it may also help in that case, too. In terms of a, a standard dog dose, we're looking at about one tablespoon per 40 pounds of body weight um, given twice daily. So, you know, and it, the suggestion, just kind of mix it, try to mix it in some water. You can see what it looks like there. It's kind of, there it is there, yum. This little kind of brownish syrupy stuff. Um, this looks a little bit like coffee. Got me excited there for a second. And because it's safe for people, I'm just gonna take a drink um, see what I think. Um, it just tastes kind of powdery water. And it's probably good for me though. Thank you for watching this edition of Energy Secrets on large bowel versus small bowel diarrhea. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by clicking that little circle just in that little box above. And then you can go ahead and click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.